Hey there friends, what is going on? My name is Rabbit and welcome to episode number 26 of Let's Play Blindly, Paladin's Quest for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. In our previous episode, we were able to successfully acquire the final piece of Kormu's equipment. We got his armor, so now as Chesney, we do have the sword, the helm, and I guess the actual body piece that goes with that. So we reported back to Daphne who informed us that Zagos has been up to things, y'all, and now not only do we need to worry about taking out the ancient machine Dalgren, but now Zagos is working on his own machine known as Noigren. So that is where we left off. We are just exploring this little cavernous area, and oh, looks like we didn't really find, ooh, do you guys see? Look at that upper right-hand spot. There is a treasure chest there. So we had actually parted ways when we were looking just around to see kind of what our, our surroundings were. And we did see that there were three ladders and we just took the lower left hand one. I'm guessing the upper right hand one is going to take us to where that chest was and then that kind of narrows down what remains. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm guessing these fights are just going to absolutely melt off the screen because we're packing some big old damage, y'all. It's not even a joke at this point. And yes, we got everyone with blow up. It's still been a wee bit inconsistent. <sighs> They're called pack grasses. I was not even paying attention to their names. We'll go ahead and hit them with another bolt and another break G. We just wanna get through this. And I wonder what's in that treasure chest. We've been going for broke somewhat with some of the chests that we've been picking up lately. I'd say, eh, for every one that actually contains something great, I would venture that we get like four or five that contain things that are not so great. So we did semi-recently acquire a new high bottle. Obviously, I'm ecstatic about that. But then we picked up other things like the Abro shit, and I think we got heavy armor as well. So these are all things that we've purchased already with our glut of cash. But check this out, you guys, a Globo. It is new for us. Wild does have one, but as you may or may not recall, even though we've kind of looked at it and discussed it numerous times, we cannot switch out what our mercenaries have equipped. So technically, the Globo bow is brand new. I almost said the glow bro. <laughs> I guess that works too. So why don't we go ahead and just try it out on Medea? I don't think that it would hurt. Well, maybe it will hurt. Okay, so 150. Let me actually look compared to what she has. 166, 155, 198. So 66, 55, 98, 66. Oh, 55. That's not very good at all, you guys. Hold on. What if we scroll over here and look at what the change would be? 65, 47, 98. 65, 47, 98. That's so weird how it makes it seem like, because I think it takes both hands. So in adding this to her, you know what? What the hell? Let's just do it anyway. I don't think it matters too much, even if we are taking a bit of our hits. Hmm, to some stats there. Because yeah, as you guys can see, it is in her left and her right hand. So we did lose the gauntlet, which I think is what was giving her the little defensive boost there. So it's, eh, it was okay, I think, to have the gauntlet and the sword ST, whatever that stands for. But, you know, I'm all about experimenting and trying out new things. And what the actual fuck is this? I don't even, a G-whip. That sounds pretty bad. So we don't want to give him a chance to get his shit off. And why don't we just spice up this battle a little bit. We will open with some, yeah, some freezing going down. Haha, -ha, so we're bringing the heat and we're bringing freeze. You can't ask for, I guess, <laughs> more opposites with your spell elements than that. But whatever, it works. As long as it gets the job done, I'm just a little concerned about, oh, never mind. Maybe I shouldn't be concerned. So far, the only enemies we faced recently that have brought a bang for their buck, those Elasaurs, you guys, were, they were a little rough to deal with. Let's stick with Break. I want to kill the G-Whip. And, you know, we can go ahead and break down the land pods. I don't think, what? I guess Freeze didn't apply to either of them. I wasn't even paying attention. I'm so busy talking about damage coming off enemies. But yes, those Elasaurs were no fucking joke. I had to stop and heal so many times when fighting them. They were just really rough and it wasn't expected because 
I think the other enemies we've faced have been okay and our levels have been great. So it hasn't been an issue or something I've had to really calculate too much or too heavily, but those LSRs gave me a run for my money. I'm gonna venture that some of these fights will feel even better once we have a fourth party member again. If you guys do recall, I mistakenly let go of Fast Joe because I thought we had the opportunity to recruit someone else, but it turns out I don't know if that was just there to troll you or if that was a reference to something, but that little priest that was just kind of chilling in, what was it called, Rakuan, I believe was the name of the town. I don't even know why we had that conversation with him and what that was even about. The art style looked a little different, so I wouldn't be surprised. You know what? We're gonna kill this, this whelp guy up here. I just, I don't like his face and what he possibly has going on. Ooh, although, it is true, these things blow up, and that could be far more detrimental to our team's safety than just dealing with this whip guy. So maybe I should reprioritize here. But anyway, I digress. So as for that little, whatever he was, some sort of Prius type of thing, or I think it was a person, right? It looked like a human, almost like Chesney and Medea, but he was wearing this weird garb, and he just was carrying on about how he thought we would meet up again eventually, but I don't even know you guys. It was very strange, but we weren't able to recruit him. We couldn't do anything. He was offering to revive us, but everyone was alive. And it's so odd, because when you think about it, if someone dies in the game, they come back with one health point after the fight concludes. So there would almost never be a reason to go visit someone and have them revive your party in a town. It just isn't a mechanic that it needs to exist. But you know, whatever. I guess it's fine. It might have just been a reference to something. Like I said, the art style did look different. So who really knows? Could be that the game is just fucking with me. Could be that it genuinely was tied to something important. I don't know. But he said there's a possibility we'll meet again. So I guess all we can really do is take his word for it and keep on keeping on. And let's see, we got S wet. That sounds gross, but I'm guessing knowing how this game goes that that is going to be a consumable that or it's a sweater is what it very well may be referring to but let's go ahead and try it out and i can use it on wild i don't think so we'll go ahead and give it to chesney so he drinks slimy's sweat chesney's max hp increased by 15 points hey that's pretty cool i will you know i will take that and see that would count as an item that is really great and are those crabs what am i looking at right now We'll have to test it out. Let's see, a dash crab. Fascinating. Well, Mr. Dash Crabs, I'm not sure what you're going to be bringing to the table, but hopefully we'll be killing you before we even have to see. So we'll just wipe the floor with them. And oh my goodness, you guys, I was saying earlier when we were talking just about dungeon navigation and how for the most part it's been straightforward. It's been quite I think palatable for me where I haven't felt too just torn in multiple directions or confused as to where I need to be going next or what I need to be doing to progress forward. It's It's been well done, I think, the designs of the dungeon so far, but something else that I think is also worthy of praise is in general how the story has been presented to us and how it's been unraveling. So I know I've mentioned this like because early on I felt this way as well, but I think the game is still doing a remarkable job of keeping up with this where it seems like you're satisfying one objective and fulfilling the expectation that is most imminent and most needed at that point in time. But then from that point forward, something changes, which it still feels realistic. It's not like it's chaos after chaos or sudden shift in tone after sh sudden shift in tone. Everything has felt quite appropriate, but it switched up the game on us. All in all, I think the story has just held up quite well and the game is doing a great job of presenting itself in all of its magnificent glory to us. So, <laughs> those eye birds look hella wack, you guys, but I'm kind of digging it. No lie, no lie. So, let's take out the micro rats. Old news here, but the eye birds are new. <laughs> wow, they look so crazy. I don't even. They almost look like. I, I don't want to say it, but with the little speckles and the slit, 
They're looking a little gross, you guys. I'm not about it, but woohoo <laughs> level for Chesney. Hey, I'm not the one that designed these monsters, you guys. I had no part in that. But let's just keep moving. Uh, I think, though, coming back to the point that I was making, that I really am enjoying how the story is being presented to us and, in general, how things are kind of flowing from what one plot point to the next. It makes me feel much more confident in the idea of playing... Well, let me actually focus for a second. Take out the eye birds. And, you know, I really don't know if this T-Rex is going to matter. We've... We met up with him quite a bit earlier, and at that time he was kind of scary. Not so much now. But anyway, I think we've got a good cue going. So back to what I was saying that I think I feel more confident in the idea and potentially the decision. I'm not going to commit to it, but this is what I'm thinking, friends. This is what I'm thinking, that I might end up playing Lennis 2 once we're done with this. I know there is a fan translation, and I know there are quite a few people that they will end up putting... I don't even know how to describe it and what it's called. It, where they take the images, even if it's like ROMs that have been fan translated or fan patched or redone or whatever, and they'll put them in the actual cartridges. And I know there's a technical word for it and some people feel mixed things about it because it, it is a little skeevy, right? That someone who wasn't even involved in the translation process, they just take a file and they know how to I guess, pack it, if you will, to lose a very, I guess, bad verb to describe this process. But they know how to take these files and, I guess, load them onto these cartridges and then they can sell the cartridges. And, of course, they're not saying that it's original. Like, I think quite a few of them that you see on Etsy is where I've seen them a lot. Uh, you'll see them even mention, like, we weren't involved in the translation. You know, what we're charging you for is the convenience of instead of you needing to figure out how to emulate or having to have a computer that can run emulators, you can run these these modded games or you can run these patched games. Hold on, y'all. What the fuck are these things? I just want to look and select. Oh, my goodness. I guess we can't really see it like this, but that works for me. Let's just, just blow them up and go from there. I... I'm so taken aback. They're called, oh, it's Goobos. Those things that say Goobo, bo, 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 except they've been purple. I don't know why these are pink. But anyway, I know some people feel mixed things about those folks that do that. But then I think, to their credit, one of the things that I've seen a, a few of those like Etsy sellers, and I'm sure they have them on eBay and Amazon as well, is they're saying they're not charging you for the game. They're charging you for the convenience of it being on the actual cartridge so that you can play from your technical hardware instead of needing to worry about running an emulator or figuring out how to even access emulators and all this other good stuff. So I don't really know where I fall along the spectrum of that argument, you know, from supporting these people that do the rom loaded cartridges and then them selling them versus it just being expected that you figure out how to run the content yourself but the point of me saying all of this is just to say that i do feel like there are options to play linus too whether i find the fan translation for the pc and play it that way or i know that i've seen some etsy shops that have it loaded onto a cartridge that you can play so just letting you guys know that it is an option but all of that aside let's hand it over to this guy and i guess we're back in oh god are we in sasquatch i think right why have you come to this town of Misudo? this is no place for people from nasquat okay there we go confirming once again i need like a a code or some sort of expression to ingrain in my head that Chesney and folks are from Nasquat. Maybe there's an N in Chesney. There's no S. So N is for Nasquat. That's how I can keep it straight. So Chesney is from Nasquat. Okay, perfect. So we're here in Misudo in Sasquat. And is this a building? It does look like a building. What am I looking at right now, you guys? I don't know if I really want to get too deep into this. I'm just looking for some shops. Oh, and find shops I have done. And if we're lucky, we might even find ourselves with a brand new mercenary. So we'll see. I'm not going to worry about sleeping or saving yet, however. We've got an overload of bottles. I need to spend a couple minutes just sorting my inventory and honestly selling shit that I've got. We have acquired so many just extra pieces of equipment, pieces of armor, just shit that we're not going to more than likely even use. 
And selling them, you know, I don't feel heavily incentivized to do that because, as you all know, we're sitting pretty in terms of our cash, but I got to get this shit out of my inventory. And anyway, this guy says, you smell, you're from Nasquat, aren't you? Ah, yes, we do recall how hostile all the natives are here to Sasquat. It's okay, buddy. I'm not worried about you. You don't need to be worried about me. Let's see what this building is. Possibly a shop. Beat it. I have nothing to sell to people from Nasquat. Okay, so I guess the only place in Sasquat that is welcoming to folks from Nasquat would happen to be Rekuan, which I think was what one of the folks actually said to us, that Rekuan was a place of like freedom and peace or something. I don't remember, but he did reference or someone referenced the fact that Rekuan isn't as crazy as the other places here. And woohoo, we've obtained G-Milk. Always worth your while to go ahead and just peep people's storage sections of their houses because you can find yourself stealing some good shit. My lips are sealed. I won't talk to you even if you pry my mouth open. Well, I am not trying to pry your mouth open, so we're just going to keep it moving. Let's open up our bag and G-Milk. It might be that Gubo milk or something. So let's go ahead and put it on Medea. So it is Gubo's milk and her strength has gone up by three points. So pretty good. I love free stat gains. I'm super pumped about that. You can't be mad about it, guys. You can't be mad about it. So we'll just spend another minute or two roaming through the town. I actually think we might have hit up Wait, because item shop was nothing. This is just an ordinary hut. I like the designs for these houses, though. That's kind of cool. Looks like we're going to have to cross the bridge to get to the weapon shop, so let's do that. I'm hoping that we find a tavern, because I really would like to get a fourth person back into my party. But if it's not meant to be, then it's not meant to be. Anyhow, he says, your Nasquat will soon be destroyed by Lord Zagos. We have an ancient machine. Okay, whatever you say, we're not too worried about it. We also have an ancient ma machine. Granted, it is very deadly and more than likely going to destroy everyone, but we've still got one too, so nye, 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 nye. You're not the only one to have a secret. Beat it, I have nothing to sell to people from Nasquat, he also says. So we won't be able to do any shopping. So I guess our true objective will be to just look for that tavern and or keep going. Maybe there was no reason for us to stop here in Misudo. <gasps> There's a child. You people are really smelly. Why do you smell like that? Oh, you know, we haven't showered in a while. We technically have been running around. Oh, it's Zaran. Zaran? Do you plan to meet with Joyce, the woman who lives here? I don't know. Yes? Hehe. <laughs> Go ahead and meet with her, but don't expect to come back in one piece. What does that even mean? What happens if I say no? Oh, I see. That's better for your health. Joyce belongs to me. Okay. Well, there we go. So we know that meeting up with this girl named Joyce is more than likely what we need to do. And we shall tackle that in episode number 27. But for now, let us part ways by seeing first. Oh, I'm the spiritualist of A. I don't know what A stands for. Maybe air. But there we go. We gave the magic of A to Chesney. Let's see if Medea. Bing, bang, boom, y'all. Finally, the first time in a while that we've gained access to new abilities. So it's kind of nice to unlock these extra spells that we might have seen on other folks, but not really been rocking ourselves. And whoopsie, let's head over to strength and see what just opened up for us in our magic menu here. So from A, so we now have, okay, it starts here with ASP. We have MG Wall build anti-magic barrier. I think we've seen some A spell. Maybe it stands for air, I would guess. Fire A, set fire to all enemies. Well, there we go. We Maybe it was Tiger who had something with air. I can't remember, but we had fire for a single target, fire for a group, and now we have fire that attacks all. This is going to be legit, you guys. We also have warp. I don't know what that means. And escape, escape from a dungeon. And then bolts all lightning on all enemies that's fantastic let's see how this changes up the game for Medea let's see my darling let's hop down till we see a reveal itself here we go so same thing with magic wall but she now has earth and air which gives us bury which bury the enemy alive don't know what that means but we'll check it out she also has warp and escape and bolt a so very exciting you guys it like i already said has been almost too long since we've seen new elements at that which in turn means we'd be seeing new spells but i'm really pumped about seeing that it's finally here 
So before we go ahead and part ways, I just want to scout out the rest of the town. No one's going to open up to you people from Nasquat the way things are now. Leave this town quietly. You were talking to Joyce from that weirdo's bakery, weren't you? No, I didn't say anything to Joyce. And it, oh, it doesn't appear as though there will be a tavern. Okay, friends. So this is probably as good as it gets with town exploration. So what do you say we call this a video? And when we come back together in episode number 27, we will immediately kickstart things by going up into this. I guess he said it's a bakery. That did look like a loaf of bread, didn't it? Yes, it did. So we will kickstart things by going upstairs to the top of the bakery, speaking with this individual named Joyce, who assumedly is going to attack us. I don't know if this guy is just full of shit or if Joyce maybe is a little crazy or maybe she'll turn out to be a recruit. Who really knows? But we will all find out together very shortly. So thanks for watching, everyone. My name is Rabbit. This is my blind playthrough through Paladin's Quest for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And I appreciate having you guys along for the ride. So take care, be good, and I'll see you in just a moment, my friends, in video number 27.